The book of 1 Kings and the Holy Bible, chapter 10, verses 18 to 20 says, Then the king made a great throne covered with ivory and overlaid with fine gold. The throne had six steps, and its back had a rounded top. On both sides of the seat were armrests, with a lion standing beside each of them. Twelve lions stood on the six steps, one at either end of each step. Nothing like it had ever been made for any other kingdom. According to the Hebrew Bible of the Old Testament, King Solomon was a king of ancient Israel and the son of David. The Bible says, Solomon built the first temple in Jerusalem, dedicating the temple to Yahweh, a God. Solomon is described as wealthy, wise, and powerful, and is one of the 48 Jewish prophets. In the New Testament, he is depicted as a teacher of wisdom. In the Holy Quran, he is considered to be a great Islamic prophet and is generally referred to as Suleiman ibn Dawood, or Solomon, son of David. We have all heard stories of Solomon's wisdom, but how many of us have heard of Solomon's magnificent throne? The Targum Sheni of Megillat Esther, or the Aramaic translation of the Book of Esther, depicts Solomon's throne as one of the first mechanical devices invented with movable parts. The enchantments of the throne are chimerical. This magnificent throne has been described as a throne overlaid with gold and studded with jewels, emeralds, cat's eye, the Baghdadi onyx, pearls, and marble. It was ascended by numerous steps. The sides of the steps were lined with twelve golden sculptures of lions, before whom were golden sculptures of eagles. The right paw of each lion was set opposite the left wing of each eagle. As one approached the top of the staircase, there was another set of six steps, directly in front of the semicircular throne. Tradition holds that these six steps related to the six terms for the earth. The first Midrash, however, claims that six steps were constructed because Solomon foresaw that six kings would sit on the throne, namely Solomon, Rehoboam, Hezekiah, Manasseh, Ammon, and Josiah. It is also said that each step served to remind the king of one of the six special commandments that the kings of Israel were commanded to observe. Each step had a pair of sculpted animals, each in gold. The first step had a crouching wolf facing a lion. The second, a wolf on its haunches facing a sheep. The third, a panther facing a camel. The fourth, an eagle facing a peacock. The fifth, a wild cat facing a cock. The sixth, a hawk facing a pigeon. On the side, rising over the throne stood an exquisite menorah of pure gold, decorated with golden cups, knobs, flowers, and petals. On each side of the menorah, seven branches turned upwards. On the branches of one side were engraved the names of the seven fathers of the world, Adam, Noah, Shem, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, with Job in the center. On the other seven branches of the menorah, the names of the most pious men were engraved, Levi, Kehot, and Amram, Moshe and Aaron, Eldad and Midad, with Hur in the center. Above the menorah was a golden jar filled with olive oil, and beneath it a golden basin which supplied the jar with oil, and on which the names of Nadab, Abihu, and Eli, and his two sons were engraved. On each side of the throne there was a special golden chair, one for the high priest, and one for the Segen, or the assistant high priest, surrounded by seventy golden chairs for the seventy elders of the Sanhedrin. At the two sides of King Solomon's ears were fixed two fish of the sea. On the top of the throne was a dove holding a sparrow hawk in its claws, symbolizing the dominion of Israel over the Gentiles. At the very top of Solomon's throne were fixed twenty-four golden wings that provided a protective shade and covering for the king. By a mechanical contrivance, the throne followed Solomon wherever he wished to go. Allegedly, due to another mechanical trick, when the king reached the first step, the ox stretched forth its leg on which Solomon leaned, a similar action taking place in the case of the animals on each of the six steps. From the sixth step, the eagles lifted the king and placed him in his seat, near which a golden serpent lay coiled. When the king was seated, the large eagle placed the crown on his head, the serpent uncoiled itself, and the lions and eagles moved upward to form a shade over him. The dove then descended, took the scroll of the law from the ark, and placed it on Solomon's knees. When the king sat, surrounded by the Sanhedrin to judge the people, the wheels began to turn, and the bees and fowls began to issue their respective cries, which frightened those who had intended to bear false testimony. Also, as King Solomon was ascending the throne, the lions scattered various fragrant spices.
Now, the purpose of these enchantments and awe inspiring mechanisms of the fabled throne was to chasten witnesses and urge them to testify truthfully. After Solomon's death, Pharaoh Shishak plundered the temple treasures and also carried off the throne, which remained in Egypt until its conquest by Sennacherib, king of the Neo Assyrian Empire. After Sennacherib's fall, Hezekiah gained possession of it, but when Josiah was killed by Pharaoh Necho, the latter took it away. Rabbinical accounts state that Necho did not know how the mechanism worked and so unwittingly struck himself with one of the lions, causing him to become lame. Nebuchadnezzar, into whose possession the throne in due course came, shared a similar fate. The throne then passed to the Persians, whose king Darius was the first to sit successfully on Solomon's throne. Thereafter, the throne came into the custody of the Greeks and Ahasuerus, or Saxes I. When it was used in the palace of Ahasuerus, it ceased to work. And that is the story of King Solomon's throne. Apparently, the throne chair of Denmark was inspired by the throne of Solomon. Now, if only we could go back in time.